Hey everyone, it's Julie. Today I wanted to go through the probably overlooked element in all these calculations of whether or not a plant-based diet is going to be better for the environment. I don't think this has been really mentioned in a lot of papers or a lot of these calculations I've seen online of the amount of land we're going to need to feed a population with plants. And that element that I'm talking about is the supplementation. Let's get into that. So this is a very complex thing, right? There's a lot of moving parts. So I'm just going to talk about what I researched and then maybe some people can add to that. But first of all, I want to talk about how we are going to provide all the people around the world with extra supplementation. I think vegans are pretty aware of the fact that you need I would say at least fortified calcium beverages. I think a lot of vegans might agree with that. A lot of them might think that you can still get them from cruciferous vegetables or tofu and stuff, but tofu is fortified often. I think calcium fortification, iron fortification might become very important for vegans as stated in the ADA paper. Vegans need a lot more iron than omnivores do. And, you know, other trace minerals and, and just minerals in general, I think are going to become more and more important the more we rely on plants. B12 is an obvious one that we're going to need. And then we might have to produce more things like vitamin D, uh, etc, etc. So that factor, when we're, when we're thinking about how much land do we need to grow enough protein for the world? Okay, that's one thing. But what about all these other elements that we're going to now need to supplement in because we're not able to get those from animal foods anymore? We're not going to be able to use their bones to make calcium anymore. We're not going to be able to use, and the clothing is another option. We can't use the leather, the, the wool to make clothing. Um, even if it's a byproduct of the meat industry, we can't use that anymore. We're going to have to create all this extra plastic and, and cotton, I guess. We're going to have to grow way more cotton. But anyway, that's another issue. But I want to focus on the supplements. Minerals come from, basically, you have to mine them, right? So we're going to put more stress on the mining industries in order to get more of these minerals into the ground synthetically, but also into vitamins because the plants aren't going to contain them more and more. Plants are going to contain less and less nutrients because you're growing more and more. You have to put it back into the soil, right? And you can't use animal manure anymore. Are we going to still keep animals just for their poop? I don't know. Is that part of the plan, vegans? You let me know down in the comments. But if we're not using animals anymore, we're going to have to mine it, right? Or you know, there's nitrogen fixing plants, which adds nitrogen to the soil, but a plant regardless is going to take out of the soil. So whether you're taking it out of the soil and then putting it back in, like you're still going to be depleting the soil more and more and more. You have to get another source of something. And I just wanted to add that on further reflection on the matter and in terms of my biosolids video, I do in theory agree with using biosolids because at the end of the day, no matter what you eat, whether it be plant, whether it be animal, the, the animal grazes on a, on a field or the plant grows in a crop. If we want to return the nutrients to those soils, it comes down to how we manage human feces, not so much the animal's feces. So in theory, I do believe in biosolids. I think they're a good thing. Maybe we should think about how we are doing it and refine the process so that we're not including pharmaceuticals and um, different toxic chemicals and different things like that back into our plants, back into our fields. But I do in theory agree with it. So we have all these nutrients now that we have to mine. We have to mine the limestone for the calcium. We have to mine the iron ore for iron, etc. Now mining these things, besides the destruction to the environment, right? It can cause a lot of destruction. It doesn't cause like a huge amount of CO2 per person. I, for about 4 million people, you can mine enough iron to meet their RDA and you would use about 30 tons of CO2 uh, 
for one, you know, just for iron. So then factor that times all the different nutrients we might need to mine. May, it's not that significant. 30 tons is equivalent to about um, 15 flights. So, I mean, flights are pretty destructive, but for 4 million people, that's not a ton of impact. Just creating synthetic vitamins in general, you need to start with coal or petroleum, you're still going to be relying on coal and petroleum to create these synthetic vitamins. There's different ways to make vitamins, okay? And so sometimes you can take a natural food and extract the vitamin, but that means you are growing X amount extra of that natural food in order to synthesize it down to one little vitamin. So take soy to make vitamin E, for instance. You need to grow a ton of soy. I don't know the numbers. Maybe someone else has them. And then condense it down into an oil and then take that oil and extract just the vitamin E out of it and that goes into your supplement. But if you think about this for every single nutrient that a person might be lacking from this diet, I think it could really add up. Yeah, so you have to condense that food down to kind of a single a single vitamin or mineral and then what goes on with the rest of it you know is all that reused is all that recycled what are we doing with the the wastage really and okay you could say we could take the protein and make a protein out of that but we're still like putting in a lot of extra energy to growing things and then condensing it down. This is something that something like a cow or an animal can do in their bodies, but now we have to mine it, extract it, and do all these chemical processes to get it into a vitamin, okay? So it's just a lot of extra work. Instead of just taking it from the animal, which is cutting out all these steps in between. These numbers are not being added into the amount of food we'd have to grow for people to be able to eat this way. You know what I mean? It's a very big question mark as to how much extra are we gonna need to make these vitamins and minerals for people. Another way to, is to take a bacteria. You still have to input like all the minerals and vitamins into the bacteria and then those vitamins are now in a more absorbable format, but it still requires the input of these raw materials, if that makes any sense. So you still have to grow all these extra plants to put into that bacteria for it then to make those nutrients. Now in terms of vitamin B12, the only thing some people might have an issue with, some people might be totally cool with this, but is that there are genetically modified bacteria that you have to use. Do we know the impact of that? I don't know. Personally, like I'd rather just get my nutrients right from the source. It seems to me a very backwards way of getting your nutrients when you have to grow all these extra things, extract everything, and then put it all together to fortify these foods to meet our nutritional needs when you can just go straight to where we've always gotten them from. Uh, and I know this is appeal to nature fallacy, but it's really a backwards way to get your nutrition. And if you think taking the plant or taking the nutrients from these plants and from the earth and mining them and then going to a lab and synthetically making them, like, is that really more environmentally friendly than just eating an egg <laughs> or just eating a piece of beef? Like, is it really more environmentally friendly when we factor in all the supplementation you're gonna have to do. I don't have these numbers personally. Like I, I searched, but like really these are numbers that I couldn't find, you know, how much soybeans do you need to make the RDA of vitamin E? You know what I mean? Like that's a number that I personally don't have, but why are we not factoring in at least B12, calcium, iron, for some people like maybe DHA, all these supplements that a lot of vegans take and if we go like the unnatural vegan route of her supplementation regime like that's going to be a lot of mining that's going to be a lot of extra growing of plants just to get this adequate nutrition and then there's the whole factor of whether it's going to be absorbed but that's a whole other story i've already gone over the ada paper that says that although a lot of vegans get the recommended daily amounts of these things, they're not showing it in their blood necessarily. So 
that's another thing. You're making like a less bioavailable product often. And why? Like really, is this the better solution than trying to switch more farms to regenerative agriculture? Get rid of this big farm model and go to more small farms. Small farms can feed more people. That's my issue and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another one.